Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello, how are you? Good teacher. Excellent. Welcome. And you, thank you. I am doing great. Very happy to be here. On time. Good. I was rushing to be on time. And I said, no, it's not possible. <laughs> but I am here. So how was your day? How was your day, my dear students? Teacher, how do you say uh, in English, muy activo? Uh, depending on, on what you want to say. Like, it was like, you can say it was very active. It was very busy, right? You can say it was, uh, the most common thing you, you can say was, it was Good evening, a teacher. Hi, Byron. Good evening. It was a very busy day, you can say, when you have many things to do. Okay. Thank you. That's that's the, the most common definition, right? It was a very busy day. Because when you say it was a very active day, uh, yeah, you can use it, right? And you had many activities and you did many things, right? But when, when you have, for example, a, a lot of things that were very good for you, you can also say that it was very productive. So you can say my day was very productive, was very active, was very busy, right? So you can use the different forms. So you can refer to the activities. Good, thank you. You're welcome. What about the rest of my students? How was your day? Was it good, bad, busy, difficult? It was good. Hi, good evening. It was good, you say. Nice. What can you mention? And I will I would like to listen to a couple of you. What can you mention as the best part of this day? If I tell you the worst part, you're going to tell me traffic, right? <laughs> I know. But what is what was the best part of the day? It can be anything special, right? What was the best part of your day? In my case, teacher, yep. And the, the best part of my day was when I was working in my home. Oh, okay. When because, you were working at home, that's nice. Yeah, because I did a lot of exercise. Okay. So you did a lot of exercise. So what is your job about? Um, I was building something in my house. Oh, okay. So you were like a little architect today. <laughs> <laughs> Very good job. Thank you. So that was the best part of Saul's day. What about the rest? In my case, uh -huh. um, I been lunch with my children. Uh -huh. With opportunity uh, with, with uh, children. Okay. okay. It, it, it was a very good opportunity to share with your children, right? Remember that children do not have a plural form, so you cannot say children's, right? So you say it was a good opportunity to share with your children. Very good. Another example of the best part of your day. Uh huh. Anyone else? I can tell you my example. The best part of my day was in the morning when I got pupusas for breakfast. That was the best part of my day. Me because, too. Yeah, you see, <laughs> that's, that's something nice. I mean, we have something in common, right? Because I was not expecting the pupusas and they just appear. And I was like, nice, right? <laughs> when I got pupusas for breakfast. That was the best part of the day. What about, uh, let me see. Did you eat anything special today? 
that you say, oh yes, teacher, I ate this and it's very delicious. Nothing. Any, any green mango, I don't know. <laughs> Today they are very famous. You can find them everywhere. Near, near the place where I work, there is a lady who always sells fresh fruit. And at noon, she has a line of people waiting for the mangoes. So it is very famous there. Okay, so in that case, remember, every day you can take notes about your day and you can say, well, today was a good day because I did this and this and this. It's like keeping a little diary and it's going to help you to practice your writing. And you might say, I know, teacher, como voy a estar llevando un diario. It is not like a diary that you are going to write secrets there. No, but you can make a recap of your day and you can say, well, today I did this and this. I went to work, ta, ta, ta. So you can write about what happened on the day. And that is going to help you a lot for you to improve your writing. If you don't want to write, take your cell phone and record a voice note about your day. And you can say, okay, there in WhatsApp, right? Pues hoy en WhatsApp ya se puede enviar mensaje a usted mismo. So that's a good benefit. So you can just put the recorder and then you start, right? Hi, today was a very difficult day because of this and this and this and this. And then you send the audio and you can listen to the audio. So you can listen to yourself producing English to see how you sound, the pronunciation that you use, right, for you not to have, and for you to advance, right, and for you not to be afraid of speaking. Así cuando yo les pregunte al inicio de la clase, ¿cómo estuvo su día? ¿Cuál fue la mejor parte? ¿Qué hicieron? Y todo. Van a tener esa fluency de irme contando. Ahí en WhatsApp usted pone mensaje para usted mismo, pone su número y graba la nota de audio. Today was a good day because of this and this and this and this. Every day, and you are going to see the difference. Right? English is a very disciplined thing. If you are not disciplined with learning, you are not going to advance. And you will say, hey, no aprendo nada en la clase. No aprendo nada en inglés. Because you are not doing anything extra. Right? You have to practice because we only have one hour together. And we need to do our best during the complete day. Right? Watching YouTube. If you like to watch TikTok, for example, Look for TikTokers in English. Look for TikTokers who teach English, right? If you like YouTube, look for tutorials in English. Look for grammar topics. Look for like good things for you to learn, right? Because that is going to be very helpful in the end, right? Well, so let's continue here. We are going to work a little bit on a couple of questions, right? And here, we are going to, uh, to work on these questions that I have right here. The first question that I am going to ask everybody is this one. Who was your phone made by? Who was your phone made by? And I need you to send me the answer on the chat. Who was your phone made by? For example, in my case, my phone was made by Samsung. Who was your phone made by? Send me the answer on the chat. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Send me the answer on the chat. On the chat in Zoom or on the chat in WhatsApp, any of the two. The one that you prefer. Uh -huh. I don't have any answers. Send me the answer on the chat. Who was your phone made by? So you say, my phone was made by, and then you tell me who did it. What, what's the company? Okay, I have an answer, yay. Okay, by Samsung, good. 
but under, okay. In my case, my cell phone, Elizabeth, you say was made by, okay, we're missing by. Okay, we are very famous. We are in the same team. Okay, let me see the, the chat. Hey, I have more answers on the chat. Very good. Okay, by Motorola, a classic. Remember at the end of the sentence, we need to put a period, right? My cell phone was made by Samsung. Good, excellent. Now, the next question. Who were your shoes made by? Who were your shoes made by? Aha, uh -huh. this is a tricky question to see if you have shoes or not. Uh huh. Who were your shoes made by? If you tell me my shoes were made by my mother, it's because you are barefoot. Esos son los que andan ahí. Sin zapatos. <laughs> barefoot. My shoes were made. Okay, good, Elmer. <laughs> Remember, as it is a proper name, we need to put the capital R, right? Rebook. Capital R. Todos los nombres propios llevan la mayúscula inicial. And the period at the end. Good. Examples. More. By... Okay, Natalie. Very nice. <laughs> Salvadorian. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. The next one. The next question that I have here. And for this one, you are going to open your microphone and you are going to answer on the microphone. Where were you born? And the next question is, were you raised there too? For example, where were you born? I was born in Santa Ana. Were you raised there too? Yes, I was raised in Santa Ana too. Okay, so where were you born? And if you were raised there too. What is the meaning of raised? Who knows that? What is the meaning of raised? Is like criar o criado. <laughs> yeah, like if you were raised. Si creciste ahí, right? That is the, the form of that question. Were you raised there? Creciste ahí también? O fuiste criado ahí también? That is uh, the answer. Very good, Nati. So open your microphone and answer that question. Where were you born? And were you raised there too? Go ahead. Okay, Saul, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to try. Uh, I was born in Chalatenango and I raised in Chalatenango too. Okay, I was raised. So you say, I was I raised. Was, okay, I was raised in Chalatenango too. Very good job. Excellent. Another example? Who else wants to participate? I was born in Aguilares City. Uh -huh. I was raised uh, too. Okay, I was raised in Aguilares too. In Aguilares too. Very good. Cristina. Okay. I was born in Santiago de Maria. And were you raised there? Um, no, I was raised in San Miguel. Very good. Excellent answer, right? I was born in Santiago de Maria, but I was raised in San Miguel. Excellent. Very good job. Ana Julia. I was born in San Salvador. Um, I was raised, raised? Uh, raised uh, in San Salvador too. Very good job. Excellent. Natalie. I was born in San Salvador, but I was raised in Sonsonate. Excellent. So you went like from side to side. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Byron. I was born in San Miguel, but I was raised in San Salvador. Excellent answer, Byron. Very good job. Daisy. I was born in La Paz. I was raised in La Paz too. Okay. You were born in La Paz and you were raised in La Paz. Elizabeth. 
I was born in San Marcos and I was raised in Soyapango. Okay, very good job, right? You moved. It is. I was born in uh, Gotera Morazan. I was raised in, in San Salvador. Excellent. So you came back to the capital. Elmer. I was born in Chachuapa and I was raised in Chachuapa too. Okay, my neighbor. <laughs> yes, teacher. <laughs> my dear neighbor. Excellent. Anyone else? Five, four, three, two, yeah, one. Sure. Go ahead, Carlos. I was born in San Miguel and I was raised in San Miguel. Very good job. Thank you very much for your answers. That is a very good way to practice. Let's go with the next one. What's your favorite book? Who was it written by? What's your favorite book and who was it written by? Saul. Okay, uh, uh, the Distance Between Us uh, was written by Reina Grande. Excellent. The Distance Between Us. I haven't read that one. Is it good? Yeah, it's a good book. Okay. I will write it down for my recommendations. Elmer. Uh, my favorite book is uh, Padre Pobre, Padre Rico. And um, Tria, he was. It was written by. It's right, written by uh, Robert Kiyosaki. Very good. It was written by Robert Kiyosaki. Very good job. It is. Okay, uh, my favorite book is um, Cambios Profundos. Uh, he was written by uh, Nicolas Trancini. Okay, nice topic. I, it, it's interesting. Second book for my pocket. Very good. Thank you, Iris. Elizabeth. The microphone, sweetie. Excuse me. Very good. My, my favorite my favorite book is Arpas Eternas. It was right written written. It was written by Hilarion. Okay. Arpas Eternas. Yes. Nice. Another book for my pocket. Daisy, go ahead. My favorite book is Try and Prejudice. I was written by Jane Austen. Okay, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Very good. Excellent answers, my dear class. Fantastic. Let's go with the next one. What's your favorite song? Who was it sung by? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, my favorite song is Yellow. Uh, Singer is Coldplay. Okay, it was sung by Coldplay. My Coldplay. It was sung by Coldplay. Very good song. Beautiful song. Can you see that? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. Excellent, Saul. Very nice. Daisy. My favorite song is It's Okay. This was song by Imagine Dragons. Ah, beautiful song. I love it. Fantastic. Vidon, which one is your favorite song? My favorite song is Clots. It was sung by Coldplay. Very good. Another fan of Coldplay. Excellent. Elmer. Yes, I like it. Me too. <laughs> My favorite song is uh, Miss Princesses. Ah, it, good. <laughs> it was sung by, uh, ah, I don't remember, but it's 
Y Zenit mm, Jesús, Alex Adrián Campos, Romero. Alex Campos. Alex Campos. Ok, good. Very good. Excellent, Miss Princesas. The next one. Anyone else who wants to share about the favorite song? No? In your case, teacher. Um, your favorite my favorite song. I have many, but my favorite song, uh, I can say that it's Adventure of a Lifetime of Coldplay. And I also like uh, Rolling in the Deep of Adele. And I love a uh, Life for Rent of Dido. So those are my, I have many favorite songs. I love songs. And I love some agropecuaria music, right? <laughs> I love a little bit of everything. <laughs> Salsa, merengue. I, I really like a lot of different kinds of music. Nati, which is your favorite? I have many too, but I'm going to tell you the top three. Uh -huh. The first one, it's rare. And it's sung by Selena Gomez. Okay. The second one is Freak. And it's sung by a group called Little Mix. Okay. And the last one is Lonely Heart by the group Five Seconds of Summer. Oh, nice. I love that one. The last one. Five Seconds of Summer have very good songs. Excellent, Nati. The top three of Nati. Nelson, which is your favorite? Yes. Uh, my favorite song is Everything I Own. Oh, that's a very beautiful song. And, and it's sung by? Um, Brad. Okay, fantastic. Brad. It's a very nice song. Everything I own. That's a really beautiful thing. Talking about music, we have many beautiful things. And if you want to practice your English, music helps a lot. But get the lyrics. Please don't invent lyrics. Okay? Si no, después ahí, ¿quién lo invocó? <laughs> it was you. <laughs> Please don't invent the lyrics. If you like the song, get the lyrics and sing, read, analyze the song, okay? And there are many beautiful songs that you need to analyze them first, right? You need to analyze them first because later on you say like, y eso andaba cantando, oh my God. <laughs> so you need to be very careful, okay? When you uh, like a song, the first thing that you need to do is to read the lyrics, analyze them, and then you can sing along with the lyrics, and that is going to help you to practice your English as well, right? Busquen la versión karaoke siempre, and it is going to help you a lot. So you can practice pronunciation. Try to imitate the singer, and that helps a lot. The next question. What's your favorite movie? You cannot tell me who was directed by, it, but you can say like a staring artist there. Go ahead. Uh, in my case, I like many movies, but my favorite, I think it is, uh, the name is uh, Me Before You. Oh, yes, that's a fantastic a movie. Fantastic. It, it's, a, it's a very romantic and nice movie. I love it. It, it is one of these uh, very romantic cheesy movies that you see once and over and over and over and you don't get bored any other favorite movie me teacher yes my favorite movie is the butterfly effect of the oh. Arton Kutcher. another good movie right butterfly effect fantastic one nice recommendations another favorite movie Me. Go ahead. My favorite movie is Harry Potter and the Half Blue Prince. I was directed by David Yates. Okay, it was directed, right? It was directed. Good, excellent. One more. One more. One more favorite movie. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Christy. Um. My favorite movie is the Corpse Bride, oh, Bride Corpse, I don't know. 
Ah, The Corpse of the Bride. Yes, it was directed <laughs> by Tim Burton. Tim Burton, I love it, right? I like Beetlejuice as well. Those that That's a very crazy movie, but I like it. And I also like the, well, I like the Caesar Hand Men. It's another beautiful movie, right? One of these classics that you have to watch. And the last question for today. When, when were you first exposed to English? When were you first exposed to English? ¿Cuándo tuvieron el primer encuentro con el inglés? When were you first exposed to English? In my case, teacher, uh, when I went to the school. When you went to school, good. Yeah, when I was a kid. When you were a kid. How old were you? Uh, I don't remember. I think uh, 12 years old. 12 years old. Okay, good. What about the rest? When were you first exposed to English? I can see very, very few cameras today. Remember that it's a part of the rules of the class to have your camera on all the time. Okay, veo solo dos, cuatro, seis, ocho cámaras encendidas. Recuerden que también eso es parte de los requisitos de la clase, tener su cámara activa todo el tiempo de la clase. Thank you very much. Let's follow the rules, okay? Good. When was your first encounter with English? When was your first encounter with English? Do you remember? I remember my first encounter with English was a, when I was like seven or eight years old and I met a person from Miami. And he was speaking beautiful English. And I was like, oh, I want to speak like him. I said, <laughs> His English was very beautiful. But in my neighbor, only my father knew English. And everyone else was like, ¿Y qué dice Brian Bus? <laughs> no one understood. So I remember that I was every day like bothering my father because I wanted to learn English. And I was stealing his books from uh, school and everything. And I remember that two years later, when I was like 10 years old, Brian came back to, to my neighborhood. And I was like, I'm ready, I'm ready. I know a little bit now. And I was understanding a little bit of what Brian was saying. And I was kind of talking with him and he was very happy to have another person speaking English with him. So that was my first encounter with English. And I learned there since I was like nine years old. That was my first moment with English. So I hope that you have your first encounter with the language and that you enjoy it later on. ¿Ya se han topado en alguna experiencia que les ha tocado hablar inglés? ¿O estar en un ambiente que solo se habló inglés? Yes. In which yes, case? Teacher. Yes. <clears throat> in which case? Were you in a meeting, in a travel? In my case, in the visit to country, but um, I <laughs> it's difficult explanation. <laughs> try, <laughs> try to explain. Try to explain. Don't but, worry. But um, I se me escapado reunión. The I, meeting. The meeting. It, only people. E full English. And I just about aterrada. <laughs> I no understand. <laughs> I didn't understand, you say. I didn't yeah. understand. But yeah. I like and uh if we retada uh aprender y por eso estoy aquí. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's a motivational moment. <laughs> when you say like ah what are they saying? Sorry. And they say, what's your opinion? And then you are like, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> Even when you I don't... say, I say, I like, but no understand. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> yeah, so you see, that is that is the importance of the language. You see, it is very necessary. It is very necessary nowadays. Now it's like like adding and reading, right? Ahora es puedo leer, puedo escribir. Ajá, uh -huh. good. Can you speak English? <laughs> no. Can you use Excel? <laughs> no. So it is a must, right? After speaking and reading. So English is very, very necessary. Thank you very much, my dear class, for your examples, right? Your examples are very good, very beneficial, and very original for you to practice your English. So you have homework to do. There, there is the homework. So report. Let me see. I am going to ask random people to see if they did the homework. Chan, chan, chan. Let's see. Sandra and Ed, did you do the homework? Hello, good evening. Yes. Hi. Okay, give me sentence number one. The phonograph was invited in 1877. 1877, uh-huh. By Thomas Edison. Okay, the phonograph was invented in 1877 by Thomas Edison. Excellent. What about number two? Who can help me with number two? Just raise your hand in the camera. And if you don't have the camera on, turn it on. Number two, passive form. Yes, Saul. I did in the homework, but I did <laughs> So, okay. Uh, radio was discovered by Maria Curie in 1998. 1898. Okay. Okay. Radium was discovered by Mary Curie in 1898. Very good. What about number three? Who can help me with number three? Five, four, three, two. Ay, ya, ya llamaba un voluntario. Nati, go ahead. <laughs> me, me, me. me Hi, me. teacher. Yes. Me. Oh, okay. Nati and Elizabeth is going to do number four. Okay. Okay. Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote uh, 100 years of solitude. <laughs> solitude. In solitude. No solitude. Solitude in 1971. Okay, and now in passive voice. Passive voice and... No. Okay, Nati is going to help us. <laughs> 100 Years of Solitude was wrote by Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1971. Okay, was written, right? Remember the past participle form. It was written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. <laughs> yes, don't worry. Number four, the World Wide Web. Who can help me with number four? Number four, three, two, one. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Your teacher. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Voluntarily. Uh, okay. okay. Um, the World Wide Web uh, was developed by Tim Barners Lee okay. in 1989. Excellent, right? The World Wide Web was developed by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. 1989. 1989. And the last one, number five. Me Who teacher. Fake? Thank you, Rene. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first digital HDTV was uh, produced by Who Paid in 1991. Excellent job. Very good job. HDTV, high definition television, right? Now it's a very common thing, right? The HDTV 
thing. Now it's the HDMI, right? It's even more common than this one. Excellent job on your answers. Remember that on these ones, we use the past participle form and we use the form of B in past for the sentences, right? In this case, say was invented, was discovered, was written, was developed, was produced, right? In this case, because you are talking about things that happened in the past. Now, we have here, a little bit of practice in pronunciation. Go with me and you say, the Coliseum in Rome was opened in 80 AD. Go with me. The Coliseum in Rome was opened in 80 AD. Coliseum. The Coliseum in Rome was opened in 80 AD. In 80 AD. The light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison. The okay. The light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison. The light bulb. The light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison. Was invented by Thomas Edison. Invent, invented. Invented. Remember invented. the sound of V. You say invented. Invented. Okay. Thomas invented. Edison. You don't say invented. Thomas Edison. You say Thomas Edison. Invented. Right. It's one invented. word. Was invented. Right. Was, was invented. invented. The next one. Invented. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. Okay, the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. In engineering. In engineering. So it's engineering. 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 Never. Engineering. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. Now, tell me that, like if you are telling me something that I don't know, and you say, hey, Teacher Nati, do you know the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? Uh -huh. Cuéntenmelo, yo no, yo no lo sé, cuéntenmelo. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. Okay, you say, Teacher Nati, did you know that the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? Teacher, uh -huh. teacher Natalie, you know was the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. I didn't know. Wow. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. You know, this is a very good practice with English, right? It is not like say so like the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering, like a robot. No, right? You have to make it sound friendly, like if you are telling me something new even when I, I really know them, right? But if it is something new for you, let's see. Byron, try it out. Teacher Nati, did you know that the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. 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 Okay, pero te faltó llamar mi atención. Hey, Teacher Nati, did you know that Teacher Nati, did you know that the Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Thank you very much, Byron, because I didn't know. Now I know. <laughs> Good. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. I am going to ask Carlos Fernando. Tell me that because I don't know. Carlitos Fernando. There you go. Teacher Nati, did you know that? Teacher Nati. Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that? The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower. Was an important advance in engineering? 
was an important advance in engineering. Okay, ahora dígame la completa. Teacher Nati, did you know that the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? <laughs> you can do it. Vamos, vamos, vamos. You can do it. Teacher Nati, what? What? Did you know did that? Did you know? Okay. Okay. Teacher Nati, did you know that the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? No, but I know now. Very good job. <laughs> Carlos, excellent. Now, you. you can choose any of the four sentences. Pueden escoger cualquiera de las cuatro. Yeah, the Coliseum, the light bulb, the Eiffel Tower, or the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is a thumb for the wife of an Indian prince. <laughs> choose the last one. <laughs> it's easier. The Taj Mahal is a thumb for the wife of an Indian prince. Practice with me. The Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal. It's a thumb. It's a thumb. It's a thumb. For the wife. Um, for the wife. Of, an of an Indian prince. Of an Indian prince. The Taj Mahal is a thumb for the wife of an Indian prince. The Taj Mahal is a thumb for the wife of an Indian prince. Okay, now, and you can say, Teacher Nati, did you know? Teacher Nati, I want to tell you that. Teacher Nati. I learned something today. Okay. Use any of the phrases. Practice it. Escojan una de las cuatro. And raise your hand when you're ready. Cuando Teacher estén listos Nati. para contarme, me avisan. Go ahead. Ana. Teacher Nati, did you know the Coliseum in Rome was op opening in 80 AD? Oh, really? It was opened in 80 AD? Wow, I didn't know that, but thank you for sharing it. Someone else? Alguien más que me quiera contar algo que no sé? Saúl? Okay, teacher. Uh, did you know that the, if the Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering? Oh, really? But you, uh -huh. you need to know something more. Uh -huh. uh, the friends is the city of love and friends uh, we we say uh, la ville de la mer <laughs> la ville de la mer <laughs> hey nice you see saul even gave me more information that i didn't know thank you very much that's good it was very good anyone else who wants to try it uh, me teacher excellent go okay teacher nati uh, the Coliseum in Rome was open in 1880D. Really? I didn't know. I thought it was open during pandemic. <laughs> now I know that it was in 8080. Very good. And did you know that people used to use the Coliseum for uh, boat fights and they used to put ships inside to fight? That was very fantastic, right? That's something that you didn't know. Ah, yeah, I told you in the platform. Someone else who wants to tell me something that I don't know. One more volunteer. Vamos a dejar un voluntario más. Go ahead. Yo, teacher. Go. Okay. Teacher Nati, do you know that Itad Mahal is a tomb for the wife of an Indian prince? Really? I didn't know that. Students, did you know that People used to make sacrifices there in El Tazumal in Chalchuapa. Oh. <laughs> you didn't know that one, right? <laughs> yeah, the Mayans used to make sacrifices there in the center of the pyramid. It was crazy. We were very crazy. <laughs> or, or ancient people was very crazy, right? And they used to play soccer there. There is a little soccer, uh, like mini stadium in El Tazumal. So you have to visit. Elmer can verify that for me. Elmer lo aprueba. <laughs> because he's from Chalchuapat. Yes, good. Teacher. So you see, that is a good way to practice. In some cases, you say like, hey, no, me voy a trabar. No, como lo voy a decir? No, bien feo se me va a oír. Practice, practice, and practice. So everybody, practice with me. Open your microphones and you are going to repeat with me. Hey class, did you know that the Coliseum in Rome was open in 80 AD? 
Hey, the class. The co hey. Hey. Okay, okay, corte, corte, corte. Only Elizabeth was repeating. Everybody has to repeat. Todos, open the microphone, please. Everybody, open the microphone. Open the microphone. Open the microphone. Thank you very much. Giselle, Cristina, Emma, Nati, Marlon, René, Carlos, Manuel, open the microphone. Hey class, did you know the Coliseum in Rome was opened in 80 AD? Hey, hey class. 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 class, did you know no. that the Coliseum no. in Rome was, was opened in 80 AD? Hey, my dear friends, did you know the live bulb was invented by Thomas Edison? Hey, hey, Christina, did you know the light was I am going to share something with you. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. The Eiffel Tower was an important advance in engineering. The Tak Mahal is a thumb for the wife of an Indian prince. The Tak Mahal is a thumb for the wife of an Indian prince. Excellent job. A clap for you, people. Give a clap to yourself. Desen un aplauso ustedes mismos. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Very good job. Okay, just give me one little second. The light bulb was invented. Thank you very much. I had an issue here with my dog. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we can continue practicing right here. I have here four different wonders of the world. Which are the names that you have here? You have the Machu Picchu, the pyramids. What else? The Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China. Chinese Great Wall. Okay, the Great Wall of China. And in here, we have different forms of uh, groups, different categories, sorry. Here we have currencies, religious groups, industries, and agricultural products. Can you classify the little list that I have here, please, with the different categories? You can do it on your notebook, please. Classify the words that we have right here on the different categories. Currencies, que son monedas, religious groups, industries, and agricultural products. Do it on your notebook, please. Okay. In the case of beef, where can you classify it? Uh, agriculture, agri agriculture products. Agricultural products, right? Agricultural products. What about Buddhists? Religious groups. Religious groups, very good. Uh, mining. Industries. Industries, very good. Peso. Currencies. 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 Christians. Religious. Religious groups. Muslims. 
Religious, religious group. Religious group. Dollar. Currencies. Currencies. Electronics. Industries. 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 Good. Tourism. Industries. 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 Cheese. Uh, agriculture. Uh, agricultural products. Let's see. Pound. Currency. 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 And wheat. Agricultural products. Agricultural products. What is the meaning of wheat? No sé. Trigo. Trigo. Excellent. Right? It is trigo. Very good job. Excellent job, my dear class. Very good. So. Let me just go here. Here we have a little conversation, right? And in this one, in the conversation, we have Linda and John. I know if I say I need a Linda, all, all the girls here apply, right? Si necesito, necesito una Linda, a todas las niñas voy a tener que. <laughs> so I need one Linda and one John to read the conversation. Who wants to be Linda? Linda for a night. Okay, Natty, for sure the Natties are, are Lindas forever. <laughs> and I need John. I need one John. Saul, very good. Okay, Natty and John. Go ahead. <laughs> Natty and Saul. Action. Hello. So, some information. What currency is used in Japan? Where? In Japan. I'm not sure. Seen it the gen. Oh yes. And do they drive on the left or the right? I think the left, but I'm not sure. Oh, well, is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Uh, well, what about credit cards? Are American Express cards a sec there? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? A travel agent? This is Linda's hair salon. Oh, sorry. Wrong number. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong number. He was like, huh? What? Eh? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Pronunciation things. Isn't it the gen, right? Isn't it the gen? Do they drive on the left or on the right? Do they, la do they drive on the left or the right? Is English spoken much there? What about credit cards? Are American Express cards accepted Accepted there? How would I know? It's like, huh? I, I don't really know that. I, I don't have that information. Well, you're a travel agent. Travel agent, aren't you? Uh, what? A travel agent? This is Linda's hair salon, right? Oh, sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Sorry for you. Okay, all of you are John and I am Linda, for sure. <laughs> hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What, what currency is used in Japan? Where? In Japan. I'm not sure. Is it the gen? Oh, yes. And do they drive on the left or the right? I think the left. I'm not sure. Oh, well. Is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Um, well, what about credit cards? Are American Express cards accept there? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, agent aren't you? 
uh, you're a travel agent, aren't you? Right? Remember, that's the question. What? A travel agent? This is Linda's hair salon. Oh, sorry. Wrong number. Wrong number, right? Thank you, Elizabeth, for representing the class <laughs> on this exercise. Thank you very much. Okay, before anything happens, I am going to call the attendance before I forget, okay? Si no se me pasa el tiempo. And I don't do it. Thank you very much for the practice. And let's continue here. Okay, I am going to call the attendance. Remember when you listen to your name, say here or present. Okay, and here I go. Ana Julia? Present. Byron Rafael? Present, teacher. Carlos Fernando? Present. Brian Eduardo? No. Cristina Abigail? Present. Damaris Merari? Present, teacher. Daisy Magdalena? Present, teacher. Elizabeth del Carmen? Present, teacher. Elmer Mauricio? Present, teacher. Elvia Sofía? Elvia Sofía? Hello, hello. No. Llamando a Elvia, llamando a Elvia. No está. Okay. Emma Jamilet? I'm here. Giselle Cecilia? Giselle? Hey, I saw Giselle connected. Okay. Uh, it is Rosario? Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel Alejandro? Manuelito? Manuelito? Manuel? He's there, but... Okay, I'm here, teacher. Sorry, I can use my microphone. Okay, good, good, good. Marbelli Jocelyn? Present teacher. Marlon Ernesto? Present teacher. Natalie? Here. Nelson Rodrigo? Sorry, Nelson Rolando. <laughs> ya les voy a cambiar present, a present teacher. <laughs> Sorry. Oscar Eduardo? Oscar Eduardo? Oscarito, Oscarito. Okay, let's see, let's continue. Pablo Reyes. Present, teacher. Patricia Verónica. René David. Present, teacher. Thank you. Patty, Patty was not here. Okay. Sandra Janet. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Sara Maria. Present, teacher. Saul Arnulf. Present. Thank you very much. So I am missing Patricia, Oscar Eduardo, and Elvia Sofia. Okay, three. Okay, thank you very much, my dear students. I am here. My microphone doesn't work, it says. There you go. Well, so we were working here on the book. And before I forget, and before I continue with something different, remember that tomorrow we don't have class. We have class until Monday, okay? But we are going to be working a little bit on the exercises of the book. And as I told you before, we were working on... Okay, sorry for the noise. There we go. We were working on the previous exercises about uh, passive forms with simple past. I need you to work on this one. These are with simple present. And in these ones, instead of, instead of using was born, was raised, was written, you are going to use the normal form of the verb is or are, and also the past participle form of the verb, right? Here you have the exercise that I need you to work on. And we are going to complete it in class on Monday, but please have it ready. Okay, here you have the exercise for the next class. So please work on it. It is also simple past, but it is with a uh, present. It's simple past, passive voice, sorry, but it's with simple present. 
Okay, so it's in this case, you say both French and English are, what do you do with the languages? Speak. Aha, uh -huh. you speak, but what speak. is the past participle form of a speak? It's spoken. Spoken, spoken right? Spoken. Both French and English are spoken in Canada. Okay, so this is the example we are going to have here. Are spoken, right? That is the first form in Canada. So you are going to do the same with the different verbs that you have on top, the simple present form of be and the past participle form of the verb. That is on your manual, so you can work on it for the next class. Have a beautiful weekend, my dear students. I am going to see you on Monday, and please practice your English. Here you have some other questions that you can answer for you to practice, okay? So you can work on the grammar and on the questions. So we are ready for the next class. And we are going to finish unit one to start with unit number two, that it's going to be about past continuous versus simple past. But that is going to be next week. Have a beautiful weekend. I am going to see you on Monday for another class. Bye-bye, my dear students. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye. bye teacher. Bye. Bye, bye. Take care. Good night. Have Good a beautiful night. Bye-bye.